So why should we build right? Well, I mean, of course, you can cheekily say because code says so. Um, but I would really look at the right hand side of the screen and it's so that we can deliver predictable performance. We've been accidentally um, building homes tighter over the years just by doing things like moving away from skip sheathing to sheet product, um, going away from lath and plaster to drywall, going away from balloon framing to true stick framing. Just a ton of the decisions that we've made over the years with better products have naturally started tightening up our home. So now we're at the place of let's intentionally do the rest of the work. Let's make sure that we disconnect our home from the places we don't want to get air from. And then let's make sure that we then combine this with a ventilation approach so that we know where our air is coming from or going to, um, and we can control moisture and resiliency in our buildings. When you do those two things together, you get predictable performance. And believe it or not, I know it doesn't always feel this way, but the energy codes, mechanical codes, residential codes, and all the other codes that we utilize uh, are designed with science and physics as their backbone. Whenever possible, a lot of work is done to make sure that these work together all towards this goal of being buildable, being as affordable as is reasonable, and to deliver predictable performance for the people who buy these homes. So what the heck does code say? Um, the Washington State Energy Code under the prescriptive requirements has a minimum of five air changes per hour um, at, tested at 50 pascals. And don't worry, we'll get into that in just a little bit. But there are some additional options you could do, right? From the table 406.3, when you're looking at your additional measures, you could select one with three air changes per hour. That is going to require a little bit better ventilation. Um, option 2.2, two air changes per hour is now going to require balanced ventilation with heat recovery all the way down to um, 0.6 air changes per hour, which is going to require an ultra high efficiency heat or energy recovery ventilator. How does that compare to some of the other codes that you may be experiencing as a builder? Um, let's say, for instance, you build also in Idaho or you build in other parts of the country then you're probably familiar with the IECC, or the International Energy Conservation Code. For climate zones four and five, that is basically describing Washington State, their target is three air changes per hour. But perhaps you build in Oregon, and you, know, you may know they have a new code as well, the 2021 Oregon Residential Specialty Code, and there they give you an option. You can either fill out a fairly detailed prescriptive checklist, which includes um, ensuring that all top plates um, between any conditioned and unconditioned space, like for instance, between the top floor of your home and the attic, that those are properly sealed. Or you can do a blower door test, um, a building tightness test, and achieve four air changes per hour. So you can see that there's a little difference here. Why is Washington State five a little bit higher? It's not because we don't believe builders can hit three or four. It's so that we can give you the opportunity to take points uh, or credits, if you will, from this additional credit table for hitting these more stringent requirements. If you've been building in Washington for a while, you know that we've had a requirement, at least since 2012, on building tightness. Actually, it goes back further than that, but <clears throat> it was prescriptive in the early days. And there are a little, some minor changes to the prescriptive base requirement in the Washington State Energy Code for building an airtight home. The base number of five air changes per hour has not changed. That was true in the 2015 Washington State Energy Code. What has changed is how the people who do that test, how they calculate the volume of the home. Previously, if you just used a standard air changes per hour calculation, bigger homes had a slightly easier time meeting that five air changes per hour number than did smaller homes. And that didn't feel quite right to us. It doesn't really sit all right. And that has to do with the shape and size of homes and the dimensionality. In other words, the difference between conditioned floor area and volume. So when we look at something like that, we want to kind of get it a little bit corrected so that small homes, medium homes, and large homes all kind of have the same chance with the same degree of air sealing to meet the ventilation or the, meet the tightness requirements. So with that, a small change has been made um, to how they do the calculation. Basically, they force a um, uniform ceiling height to be adopted, and that really helps level this out a bit. 
So you keep hearing me say tight homes. You know, what do we really mean by tight homes? Do we mean living inside of a bubble? Well, not really. I mean, let's be honest. What we really mean here are homes um, that are tighter than three air changes per hour. And that aligns pretty well with one of the options um, in the energy credit section in table 406.3 of the Washington State Energy Code. Option 2.1 gives you a half a credit in single family or a full credit in multifamily if you can get the home to three air changes per hour and make sure that your ventilation system uses Energy Star rated fans. So again, for what we're talking about in this presentation, we're gonna to refer to tight homes as those that are three air changes per hour or less. Now you're probably saying, Dan, why are you really focused on the number three? Didn't you just tell me a five is the prescriptive minimum? Yes, that is true. Um, but if you've had any experience building in Washington and you've spent any time with our new code, you'll know that the volume of additional credits that you need to get from table 406.3 has increased a fair amount. And that pretty much so means you're gonna need to make one selection in each category. So you're going to have to take probably one approach under air leakage control and efficient ventilation options. And the most common popular and lowest cost option is this first one, 2.1, getting the house to three air changes per hour in terms of tightness, and then doing whole house mechanical ventilation with Energy Star rated fans. In that concept, it's not specific. You can choose whichever type of ventilation strategy you would like. We'll